Copilot is largely regarded as the most powerful productivity tool on the planet, but is it? I have been using different Copilot capabilities for the last six months, and here's the truth. Copilot is expensive for individuals and for organizations. And when I say expensive, I'm talking about more than just the price tag. Because there are other factors you need to be aware of when using Copilot that they don't tell you. And I'm not even talking about the different issues that Copilot has or the data implications of using Copilot. I'm talking about the unforeseeable costs that you're gonna experience when using Copilot. Look, everybody understands that generative AI and Copilot are really cool pieces of tech, but everyone's wondering, does it actually boost performance? And if so, how much? I mean, is it even worth the money at this point in time? Or better yet, how do you learn to actually use Copilot properly? Like I said, I have been using Copilot capabilities for the last six months now. This is including the enterprise chat or whatever they're calling it now on the Microsoft Edge to even the sales Copilot add-in in my Outlook. I also work for a Microsoft partner in the Microsoft Dynamics space and it's been cool to implement Copilot into business apps like sales and customer service as well. I want it to be known that even though it kind of sounds like I'm hating a little bit on Copilot, I truly think it's a really powerful tool. I mean. I use it literally every day in my current workflow and it definitely helps me save time. Back in October, I actually made a video rating my Copilot experience and I rated it a 10 out of 10. Now this rating had some stipulations on it because I was only talking about Copilot's ability to write emails, to summarize Teams meetings, etc. I think there are some Copilot capabilities that need some work, especially the Power Apps capabilities. But for the typical employee and their uses for Copilot, it's pretty effective. Now this productivity boost comes with two major costs and we're gonna be covering what those are right now. Now the first and more obvious one is the cost of Copilot on a monthly basis for either yourself or if you're an organization for your employees. Now the second cost is more important to consider but I'm not gonna talk about that one just yet. You know, for like, video retention. It is important to first clear the air. The word Copilot can mean many different things and the different Copilot offerings available are vastly different. Let's get on the same page. For starters, there are three main Copilots to consider in this conversation. There is the free Copilot currently available in Microsoft Edge, as well as it's said to be coming to Windows 11 if you have a Windows computer that's eligible. This, like I said, is free, but it's fairly limited. You have the entire large language model, but you don't have the ability to integrate it into Office or apps like Outlook and Teams. The biggest strength of the free version is the chat, in Edge, you can use this to summarize a web page or generate other content, but everything you make in this will need to be copy and pasted into wherever you wanna use it. It also doesn't save any previous conversations like other generative AI capabilities do, so if you refresh, you lose it. Secondly, the next Copilot capability to talk about is what's called Copilot Pro, and this is an extension that lets you add Copilot to things like Microsoft Office and others. This is essentially Microsoft's version of ChatGPT+, which allows you to use a better large language model and as well as use more characters or bigger pieces of information in your prompt. This Copilot Pro is where I feel you could really begin to save time and boost productivity if you're somebody that regularly uses Microsoft Office. You can use it to create docs in Word, create fully fledged PowerPoint decks, or write formulas in Excel, etc. But this Copilot Pro is not for organizations, it's for individuals who are wanting to get more out of their generative AI experience. Even on the website, you can see that if you're an organization, you should not be using Copilot Pro because it's not eligible, you're gonna be directed here. Which brings us to the final offering we're talking about today, which is Copilot for M365. This is because it's not only gonna be integrated into Office, but it's also gonna be able to access your company's documents and databases using what's called Microsoft Graph. Copilot for M365 costs $30 per user per month. And you need to remember that this is on top of any E3 or E5 licenses that those users would already have. So considering that each employee's licenses just for Microsoft would cost up to $87 per month, it's having organizations pump the brakes because if you wanted to add Copilot capabilities to say 500 employees, 
that's gonna cost you an extra $15,000, again, per month. Now, I do not want you to think that I'm against Copilot for M365 because a little spoiler, I'm not. Here is why. Say I am a customer service representative and my main job at my employer is to respond to customer claim emails. Let's also say that on average, I complete about three cases an hour or about 20 cases a day. I should probably warn all the I hate math people out there because this is unfortunately gonna get a little mathy, but I'll make it as simple as I can. Okay, so I complete 20 cases a day or an average of three cases an hour or an average of 20 minutes a case. Microsoft has shared that their own customer service teams saw improvements of case resolution times by 12% in this case study. For the sake of easy math, let's say that we decreased our case resolution time by 10% or two minutes. Because Copilot was able to get us a document faster or craft an email response faster than we would have been able to do it ourselves, we're now able to resolve the case in 18 minutes instead of 20 minutes. I get this two minutes doesn't sound like a lot, but if you begin to compound this two minutes over the course of a day, over a week, over a month, you can actually see some pretty big savings. Remember, we solve about 20 cases a day, so if we save two minutes on each case and do 20 cases, we're now saving about 40 minutes a day. 40 minutes a day over the course of a month is about 1,200 minutes or 20 hours of time saving. I hope you're not swimming too much in the numbers yet because this here is where it all begins to make sense. Without Copilot, these 20 hours could cost you 400, 600, or 800, or even more dollars depending on the employee's pay. Is just $30 for Copilot starting to look like a good deal yet? I understand that these numbers are all operating on several assumptions. It's not a guarantee that Copilot is going to boost your employees' work or if they had more time that there would be more work for them to do. But if you can save just 10%, even 5% over the course of a month, that 5% savings of just $30 is a lot cheaper compared to an employee. If you can save just a little bit more time, even on a marginal basis, it might be worth it because it's effectively only costing you a dollar a day, kinda. See, we have another important thing to consider when spinning up Copilot. We not only have to consider the cost of Copilot, but also the cost associated to taking time to get Copilot set up and train users on how to use it effectively. Is this a good time to shamelessly plug the channel? I am continuing to make more content on how to use Copilot capabilities more effectively, so if you are looking to boost your productivity, consider checking out those videos and subscribing. Anyways, you cannot just look at the price tag of Copilot, you also need to look at the implications of setting it up and training people on how to use it. Fortunately, there's a lot of things that you can do to mitigate this cost. And this cost or loss of efficiency when using Copilot can quickly get out of hand because if you're using Copilot ineffectively, it's wasting time. It's wasting time because people are spending more time talking, going back and forth with Copilot or correcting the Copilot outputs instead of resolving cases to continue our example from earlier. There's also this concept of Copilot hallucinations. This just means that Copilot or the large language model that Copilot uses will insert information into its output that the prompt or the person using it didn't necessarily ask for. The users then have to spend time proofreading and correcting this copilot output. And if the copilot output is just too far gone, they'll rightly disregard it completely. Now, all of this can be mitigated through writing better prompts and training users to use it effectively, but at least at the beginning, this is inevitable for organizations. Learning how to write prompts or what is called prompting is something that nobody has truly mastered yet. But how do you write better prompts and reduce this time waste? Well, there are three main things that your prompt should contain. That is a persona, context, and an objective. The persona outlines who Copilot is personifying or the actor Copilot is playing when producing its output. Typically, this will be the person interacting with Copilot. You want Copilot to create something 
for you to then use. Personas could be something like as a customer service representative responding to a case or as a sales team member who's meeting a large regional customer for the first time. The next key, as I mentioned, is context. This is providing all of the information around the ultimate ask of Copilot. Are you speaking to a long-standing customer or a new one? Maybe you're speaking to an angry, unsatisfied customer. Or are you just wanting to write an email for an internal communication? All of this plays into the context of your prompt and is going to allow Copilot to produce a better output. The final piece, the objective, is really just what you're asking Copilot to do. What do you want from it? I could spend way more time talking about prompting, but I'm not going to in this video. If you're interested, click this linked video here. It's no secret that Copilot and other generative AI tools are the coolest recent advancement in tech, but it's having people hesitant to use it and rightfully so. I find that most people either don't care or don't know how Copilot can boost business. And considering you're still here, I know that you care. Just even if it's a little, you care. I mean, we're talking helping sellers sell. We're talking getting instant real-time marketing insights or automatic work order creation and assignment. And there's more. This playlist here is gonna talk about everything you need to know on how Copilot can boost your business across the Microsoft Dynamics suite. Thank you guys so much for sticking to the end of the video. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of Citizen Developer, and I'm excited to connect with you guys in the next one.